One question that a lot of prospective riders have about getting into riding a motorcycle is just how dangerous is riding a motorcycle? At least the smart ones ask that question, and it's a valid question, one at that, that every rider needs to take into account before they decide to get into riding. This week I'll throw some numbers and some charts at you and we'll see exactly how dangerous riding a motorcycle is and we'll compare that to driving a car and then I'll give you some tips that will greatly decrease your odds of being involved in a fatal motorcycle crash. Hey, my name's Kevin and I release a weekly video here on MC Rider that focuses on road skill and or road strategy to help make you a better rider. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button or head over to mcrider.com where I have every video ever released on MC Rider over the last three and a half years. At mcrider.com, you'll find a huge resource of free videos to help make you a better and smarter rider. Consider it my gift to you just for being a member of the riding community. So just how dangerous is riding a motorcycle? Well, I work hard here on MC Rider to provide accurate and honest information to you. And I think it does no one any good to shy away from that question. So let's answer it in a straightforward and honest manner. And I thought the best way to answer that question is by comparing it to something that most people can relate to, driving a car. Most of the numbers for this video were taken from the Department of Transportation's Fatality Analysis Reporting System. And I'll have a link to that in the description on this video at mcrider.com. So let's jump into this and let's look at some common causes of fatal and non-fatal car and motorcycle crashes. Now motorcycles and cars have a few things in common when it comes to the causes of most fatal crashes. And it's three things, speeding, alcohol, and distracted driving. These numbers from 2004 to 2013 show that 31% of fatal crashes involved alcohol. 31% of fatal crashes involve speeding, and 18% of fatal crashes involve distracted driving. Now that's between cars and motorcycles both. The NHTSA also states that for every 100,000 cars on the road, 13 of them will be involved in a fatal crash, and for every 100,000 motorcycles on the road, 72 of those will be involved in a fatal crash. If you look at those numbers by miles traveled, it gets a little worse for motorcycles as they're 35 times more likely than a car to be involved in a fatal crash per mile traveled. So yes, no surprise, riding a motorcycle is more dangerous than driving a car and I don't think that statistic surprises anybody. But riding a motorcycle does not have to be this dangerous for you. I'm not talking to the broad masses of motorcycle riders now, I'm talking directly to you, the individual rider watching this video. Most of the riding public will never see this video, and for those who do, many of them will choose not to accept my advice. But there are things you can do as an individual to dramatically reduce the odds of you being involved in a fatal motorcycle crash. You see how many times I said it and emphasized the word you in those last few sentences, it's because that's where it starts and finishes with is you. I don't care how many drivers are distracted with their cell phones. I don't care how many drivers run red lights and I don't care how many drivers cut you off or pull out in front of you. If you take control of your own riding skills and road strategy and wear proper gear and ride sober, you can dramatically reduce the likelihood of being involved in a fatal motorcycle crash. So what are these things that we can do to protect ourselves on the road? Well, we mentioned three of them right at the start of this video. Speed, riding impaired, and not being distracted. If you just follow these three pieces of advice, you'll greatly reduce the odds of being involved in a fatal motorcycle crash. Let's look at these three things in a little more detail. First, speed. Well, let me tell you the rules that I apply to myself as it relates to speed. Now, this is not necessarily advice for you, 
but it's how I handle the subject. Writing in a city like Dallas-Fort Worth, I'm not necessarily as concerned about the overall speed that I'm traveling as I am the speed differential with the traffic around me. When riding in traffic, I try to ride with the flow of traffic. I don't want to be flying past cars, and at the same time, I don't want cars flying past me. Now, this has nothing to do with getting there sooner. It has to do with me keeping myself out of harm's way. I think you can put yourself at great risk by flying in and out of cars well above the posted speed limit if the flow of traffic is driving at the speed limit. And on the flip side, you can put yourself at great risk if you're a speed bump in the middle of the road. I try to ride within the flow of traffic while maintaining a safety margin around me. If that's a little above the speed limit, I feel I'm much safer than having cars stacked up behind me, tailgating me, and racing to get around me. Now these rules change when I'm out on a lonely country road. In those situations, I'm generally riding at the speed limit. And in my book, speed differential, not overall speed, is the most important safety factor when it comes to speed. Now, can you get a ticket for riding with the flow of traffic if it's above the speed limit? Yes. Should you complain to and try to justify this to the police officer if you get a ticket? No. I would chalk it up as a safety tax in order to keep myself out of harm's way. If you don't feel comfortable riding within the flow of traffic, for whatever reason, my advice is to find a different route that has the speeds that you're comfortable with riding at. Riding impaired. So how common are alcohol-related motorcycle crashes? Well, approximately one in three motorcycle crashes involves alcohol. Of the 2030 motorcycle traffic deaths in 2002, involving a single vehicle, 43% had a blood alcohol content of 0.08 or higher. My advice, and it's real simple, is don't do it. This one step alone will make you a whole lot safer than the riders drinking at the local bike night or at the biker bar. Motorcycles and alcohol do not mix. Here's a fact. Sadly, some of those very same people who scoff at riding impaired will die in a motorcycle crash this weekend while riding impaired. Riding a motorcycle is risky enough. Why impair your ability to ride and decrease your inhibitions at the same time by having a few drinks and riding home? It's simply not worth it. In fact, if you combine excessive speed and or alcohol, they were a factor in about 50% of all single vehicle motorcycle fatalities. So just by eliminating those two, you're greatly reducing the odds of you being involved in a motorcycle crash. Distracted riding. Now, distracted driving is not a surprise to anyone, but I think distracted riding crashes are on the rise because of a current trend in motorcycle design. Now, it's too early to tell whether I'm right on this from the statistics because it's a little bit too soon, but I think TFT displays, built-in navigation, and media players that are becoming more and more common on motorcycles will lead statistically to an increase in distracted rider fatalities on motorcycles. I have two bikes behind me that are the poster child for gizmos to play with while you're rolling down the road. The Goldwing has a dash mount and control to make changes while the motorcycle's not in motion, and it replicates some of the same controls to the handlebars. So in theory, you can make changes to the navigation, the playlist, the text messages, and a whole lot more while never taking your hand off the left handlebar. But let me tell you something, that motorcycle will roll down the road just fine if I take both hands off the handlebars. The problem is not how I'm physically scrolling through all those menu options with my hand on or off the handlebar. The main problem is the mental processing and the distraction that doing so creates for me. I can be just as distracted looking at the screen and trying to find a playlist I want using my thumb as I would be taking my hand off the handlebar and using the center console. Now, I'm not opposed to motorcycles having TFT displays, media players, or 
any of those kind of things. In fact, I like all of that, and I use it all the time before I pull out of the garage at gas stations or when the motorcycle stopped. But if I tried to drill down through some of the menus on the display that I have access to while that bike is rolling, I'm a distracted rider. It all comes back to personal responsibility. Just because you can do something does not mean it's in your best interest to do so. But hear me on this, motorcycles do not suffer fools. If you play stupid games riding a motorcycle, you're gonna win stupid prizes. Keep your eyes and your mind focused on the road. If it's so important and cannot be done without being a distraction, it's your responsibility to get the bike to a stop before making changes. Motorcyclists will always be at a greater risk than car drivers because we don't have airbags, seat belts, or crumple zones to protect us, but we do have riding gear. Head injuries and brain damage is the leading cause of death for motorcyclists involved in crashes. Wearing a quality helmet will greatly improve your odds of avoiding brain damage. Add to that the fact that 35% of motorcycle crashes result in facial trauma and disfigurement from a direct impact to the chin, and this can be avoided by wearing a full face helmet. Round out a good helmet with proper riding gear and you reduce the odds of having spinal injury, road rash, or broken arms and limbs. Riders often hear road rash and they think it's no big deal. But I had a rider sitting in my new rider class one time who had just spent a few months in a burn unit because he had a crash on the highway and slid down the road, burning all the skin off his chest and his back. Not only did he realize that he needed to brush up on his riding skills, but after several skin grafts, he realized that road rash was no joke. My advice is to learn from his mistake instead of having to learn from your own mistake. There's a whole lot more here that can be covered in a single video, so head over to mcrider.com slash road strategy for a huge playlist of videos on the subject. There you'll find tips on how to navigate traffic, proper lane position, dealing with intersections, and more to help you increase your odds of many miles of safe riding. All of this totally free of charge. While you're there, look at the membership options and support MC Riders so that I can continue to bring free weekly videos to the riding public. In life, we make a lot of choices every day. Every choice carries some risk and some reward. Your job is to decide if the risk is worth the reward. Well, I can tell you this, there's nothing else like riding a motorcycle. A lot of people dream of riding a motorcycle, but never step out and take that chance to learn. If you've dreamed of riding a motorcycle, like what would it be like feeling that sense of freedom and the wind in your face? Well, it's better than you dreamed it would be. But you have to be responsible about it and never stop learning. I hope this video helped you see some of the basic steps that you can take to greatly reduce your risks while riding a motorcycle. And until next week, guys, it's Ken with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road. There are multiple ways to support the channel. You can become a member on YouTube at mcrider.com slash member, or support the channel through Patreon at mcrider.com slash support. Either way, you'll get full access to the forum and the field guides, which will further the training that we release here on a weekly basis.